Kings Island recently just opened their new for 2020 B&M Gigacoaster O'Rion. Unfortunately, this dissatisfied many enthusiasts, and now they are looking for Kings Island's next coaster, and we are going to be helping them find that in this video. But before we get started, I just want to go over a few things. First of all, this video is 100% not confirmed and just rumors and speculation. I also really want to thank you guys for helping me hit 500 subscribers. I post new videos just like this a couple days a week, and I really appreciate the fantastic support that this channel has been getting. And now let's dive into their next coaster, but first we need to analyze what holes that they have in their lineup. KI is a very well-rounded park. They fill almost every gap. The main ones that they are missing are a vertical or beyond vertical drop coaster, and they are also missing a spinning coaster. Another few gaps that they are missing are a modern launch coaster. Yes, the park does have two launch coasters in Flight of Fear and Backlot Stunt Coaster, however both of them are rather old and outdated. Another thing to look at is that Kings Island hasn't added a family-oriented roller coaster in 15 years, the last one being Backlot Stunt Coaster back in 2005. So that makes me wonder, will the park continue on their spree of adding thrilling coasters or will they take a break? and help out the kids. So without further ado, let's get into what I think could be Kings Island's next coaster. My first pick is a Gerslauer family coaster, such as Pegasus Express at Parc Asterix in France. This is a fairly new model, and it has popped up and done pretty well over in Europe, but one has snuck its way into the US and is located at Dollywood, and it is called Fire Chaser Express. Since I have had the fortunate opportunity to ride Fire Chaser Express, I can definitely say that it is super fun, and it's a great family coaster. Everybody will enjoy it, from the kids to the adults. Since Cedar Fair has started working with Gerslauer, I could definitely see this happening, especially since Outpost 5, aka Son of Beast Station, is still there just chilling on the property. Since this coaster model is capable of both launches and lift hills, I think that it would be a very unique fit at the park, and since Son of Beast Station is ridiculously elevated, it could have a nice terrain-based layout. Oh yeah, by the way, if you didn't realize, if this coaster gets built, I do think that it will take up Son of Beast's old station and most of its plot of land. My next option is either an extreme or a family coaster, but either way, I see it being a mock rides launch coaster. I'm not really sure which way KI would go, whether they would choose a family coaster like SeaWorld San Diego or be like Carowinds and get an extreme multi-inversion coaster. Either way, I definitely see this coaster going on Vortex's plot of land, and maybe even using the terrain that Vortex sat on. Just to be clear, I know that Vortex did not use the terrain, however its location was very hilly. Since Carowinds has high attendance and they just got Copperhead Strike which has rather low capacity, I don't think that Cedar Fair will find an issue with Kings Island's high attendance maybe being an issue with the new launch coaster's queue. Since apparently almost all mock rides coasters are big crowd pleasers, I I could definitely see this being a hit at the park. Now onto another Vortex replacement, a mini B&M dive coaster. Just to clarify, none of these B&M dive coasters are actually mini. They stand from about 110 to 150 feet tall. They're just called mini because they're a lot smaller than other B&M dive coasters, which are all over 200 feet tall. Anyways, I think that this could be a very good replacement for Vortex and a very good fit at the park, for a few reasons. First of all, it's another multi-inversion roller coaster to go in Vortex's plot. Second of all, because it would be the park park's first vertical drop roller coaster, so it would be very easily marketable. And because the general public always seem to love these rides, mainly due to their intimidating first drop. Anyways, I think that Kings Island should just look over at a few European dive coasters. They don't have a very long layout, however they have very good theming, and with Cedar Fair's new approach to add theming to their rides, I think that this could work very, very well. Moving on from a vertical drop coaster, now onto a beyond vertical drop coaster. I think that Invertigo could possibly be removed in the upcoming years and it will be replaced by a Gerslauer Infinity Coaster. If this happens, I do see it happening with a redone front entrance, however that's not a new coaster so that will wait for my Kings Island 10 year plan video. Since these Infinity Coasters seem to be rather cheap and be crowd pleasers, I could definitely see this happening. However, if this does happen, they will most definitely not be getting that B&M dive coaster that I mentioned earlier, because no park needs two 90 degree or near vertical drop coasters. Anyways, since these 
these Gerst flowers are really picturesque and rather unique. I think that this would be an awesome ride to see as you're entering Kings Island. Now to end this video, we have the two least likely options, at least in my opinion. First of all, a B&M wing coaster to replace in Vertigo, Congo Falls, and maybe even the Timberwolf Amphitheater. Just like our last option, this would also come with a brand new front entrance and fly over it just like how Gatekeeper does at Cedar Point. However, I do find this to be quite unrealistic, and here's why. North America has four B&M wing coasters. All of them reside in the United States. All of them also reside in the Midwest United States, aka meaning that if Kings Island were to get a B&M wing coaster, it would be the fifth in the Midwest. However, since Cedar Point was able to tie this in with their brand new front entrance, I think that Kings Island could too, especially since a new roller coaster with a front entrance would be so much more marketable than just a brand new front entrance. Now for our least likely choice a roller coaster made by RMC, or Rocky Mountain Construction. Yes, I know that this is going to pain every enthusiast out there, however, it just has to be said. Kings Island will most likely not be getting an RMC for the long run. Here's why. RMC only has three roller coaster models, well, at least for now. First of all is the Topper Track, a ground-up and rather unique type of wooden coaster. Next up is the iBox Track. This can be used for one of two things. Most traditionally, it's used to turn old and disliked wooden roller coasters into new and sleek hybrids. Another choice is using the ground up. RMC has recently shown that they can do the ground up with Zadra at Energylandia. If the parks have time, money, space, and unfortunately don't have a rinky-dink old wooden coaster, RMC will build them a hybrid coaster from the ground up. And their third option is the Raptor, aka their version of a thrilling single rail coaster. These ground up steel coasters seem to be a lot cheaper than other steel coasters since they have to pay less for steel, since it's just one continuous beam. However, these have not been the most reliable. I don't know why, but for some reason they seem to have a decent chunk of downtime. Which one of these do I think Kings Island will get? Well, let's just cut out the topper track, because Kings Island does not need another wooden coaster. Now that we've narrowed it down to the Raptor and iBox, I actually think that the Raptor is the most likely option. Yeah, I know how awesome it would be to see Racer get the Iron Horse treatment and become an amazing hybrid. However, I just don't see that happening. Unfortunately, I'm not sure where this Raptor would go. Maybe in Rivertown, Coney Mall, or maybe even Action Zone. And now it's the time of the video where I say what I think will come to the park and when it will happen. Yes, this might be a little bit of a shocker, but I do think that the Gerstlauer Infinity Coaster with the brand new front entrance will be the next coaster that Kings Island adds. I chose this for a few reasons. However, the main one is that I don't see Kings Island working with B&M, at least for a while, especially since Orion wasn't able to make all the money that Kings Island probably planned. I think that they will be springing for a low-cost but very popular attraction, and the Gershauer Infinity Coaster definitely fits that. Anyways, that's going to wrap up my video on what could possibly be Kings Island's next coaster. Let me know what you think could be Kings Island's next roller coaster in the comments down below, and I'll catch you guys next time on Hang Time Thrills. Yeah.